All right, we want to welcome everyone here today. A snow day, got some snow clothes on here. We want to welcome everyone watching by way of live stream today as well. And uh, continue to pray for uh, Pastor Bob and the team. We Half of them, their flight got canceled from Israel. Half of them came back yesterday. The rest of them are getting back um, today around 4 at Dulles. And my wife, Kelly, her plane got canceled in, from Haiti as well. But she got, she just landed and she's on her way here as, as well. And they are watching by, they are watching by way of live stream. Yes. And so we are going to be doing something uh, a little different this morning. We are going to be uh, talking about prayer, but we are going to have a moment of corporate prayer uh, this morning uh, for, for Pastor Jeff and for uh, Miss Dawn's uh, father. Dawn, what is your mom's, your dad's name? We're going to pray for Donnie as well. And so what I need and um, what I need everyone to do, and I'm going to say this throughout the message, I want you to pull your phones out, and you can do this in the congregation as well. I want you to text, message everybody that you know in the church, and I want them to tune in to the live stream, okay? So go ahead and do that, because we're going to, I'm going to talk for a couple minutes about prayer and intercession, but we want to have as many people uh, all over the place, our city and even the country, to join us in corporate prayer. All right, so go ahead and text them, message them, and I'm going to say this again a couple times in the message in case people tune in, but we want everyone uh, to do that. Uh, Ms. Dawn's uh, father is in, is in hospice, and we want to, and he's not doing as well, and we want to pray for him and the family, and we also, we're going to intercede for, for Pastor Jeff. He is, he is in the hospital right now in, in Harrisonburg again, and uh, they just got a, got a report that his, the valve in his heart is, um, is, 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 what's the word they use, Hope? Well, it's, um, it was dilated, so it can't close. We knew that it was moderate, but the stress that's happened has caused it to open back okay. up excessively. So, so the stress on his heart from uh, going back into heart failure has caused extreme stress on his heart valve. And uh, it was at a moderate point, but now it's very, it's severe. And so they've even, they started throwing around the word for heart surgery. And so we, we, need, to, we need to pray for him. And we are going to be, be believing for healing. We are going to be believing for a complete recovery. And that as, as, as God uh, works in his heart, brings him back into sinus rhythm, because he's in AFib right now, brings him back into sinus rhythm, that, uh, it'll, that God will begin to heal that, that, that valve. So we want to pray for him. We want to pray for the doctors to have wisdom. So, but I just want to encourage you, again, get your phones out, text people, message them on Facebook, have them tune in to the live stream. That's it. You can go to swfhome.org and go to live stream or go on to YouTube and the links uh, there as well. So make sure everyone d does that. And we also, Mateo, man, thanks for being here today. Mateo is going to be is one of our new drummers. He's going to be rotating with Kenny. Did a, did a fantastic job. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open it up to uh, Matthew uh, chapter 7. And we had an awesome men's breakfast the other day. Uh, at, at Perkins. If you are a man in the church, I want to encourage you to, to participate in this. Uh, Pastor Gary's done a great job with putting this together, and we just had a fantastic time there talking. And there was a topic of intercession and prayer that we brought up, and we just kind of want to share that today and why things happen, when things are spiritual attacks, and when it's just life. But uh, so, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. It says, therefore, everyone who, he this is Jesus talking, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. So Father, we just come to you right now and Lord, we pray that this uh, word would speak life and wisdom into our hearts. And Lord, that it would just bring up, and you would, Holy Spirit would speak through me, and it would bring fresh revelation 
of the concept of prayer and the reality of prayer and, and, and how we connect with you. Too many of us have become impotent in prayer and we don't know what to do and how to connect with your power. And so, Lord, I pray you would give us wisdom and, and teach us how to pray and connect with you and, and intercede with power in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the word of God here says, listen, the storms of life come. The rain's going to come down. The flood waters are going to rise. The wind is going to blow on the righteous and the unrighteous. Whether you built your house upon the rock, which is Jesus, or whether you build your house upon the sand or your own understanding, storms of life are going to come. Now, whether that is just life because we live in a sinful, fallen world, and sometimes life just happens. Or if it's a spiritual attack upon the enemy. We were discussing this at the men's breakfast because of all the different things, especially that have happened uh, to the, the pastoral staff and, and, and family members and just different key people in the church. You know, is it a spiritual attack as well? Now, regardless of which one of those that is, you know, it happens to the righteous or the unrighteous. And so, but if we build our house upon the rock, when those things happen, we will be able to stand firm and be unshakable and unmovable. That doesn't mean that it won't hit us and affect us. It doesn't mean that we won't grieve and, and, and go through moments of, man, Lord, are you there? That's human nature. That's normal. Even the gentleman in the scripture says, Lord, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. You know, he had moments of doubt, but he had faith in Jesus and asked him to increase that faith exponentially and help him in that, in that moment. And so what does that look like in our lives when we build our house upon the rock? What does that look like? What does that mean? I mean, we can say it's if we're a follower of Jesus, and that's true, but how many of us have said the sinner's prayer? We come to church, you know, we're followers of Jesus, but sometimes, man, life is just, just hitting us, and we seem like we're falling down, and, and, and we can't seem to, to get, our, get our footing. And so what does that solid rock look like? A few weeks ago, we were talking about God's grace. And when we are walking in God's grace, truly living there, you know, that is the place when we are standing upon God's rock. And so let's talk about that this morning. So we're going to turn back um, a chapter into Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to talk a little bit about prayer. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Be careful to not do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they will receive their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Um, then your father who sees them. I started too early. Actually, I want to start in verse 5. So verse 5, excuse me. And when, you're, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who, who love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, everyone say Father, Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. So this is how you should pray. Our Father, again, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And so when we go to pray, we need to recognize who we're talking to. We're talking to our Father. And the interesting thing about a relationship between a father and a child is that the child does not go to earn their father's approval in order to have the father provide for them. I love my children. I have five of them. They're great kids. You know, but occasionally, you know, they're kids. They're going to tweak my nerves. <laughs> when they tweak my nerves, I still feed them. <laughs> I still give them a place to live. 
I still clothe them. I still teach them. Or I still drive them places. I still do all those things, even if they have a temper tantrum right. and are misbehaving. Even if they disappoint me and do something they're not supposed to be doing, which we've talked about, I still love them because I'm a good father and you're good parents. You, know, you wouldn't treat your kids that way. But our Heavenly Father is a bazillion times greater than we are. And so what is grace? Grace is, and being led by the Spirit, we talked about the last two weeks, is grabbing a hold of our Heavenly Father's hand, allowing Him to lead us where we're going. Having that faith and trusting that He is going to provide, He is going to protect, He is going to teach, He is going to guide. And that I don't have to do anything to come into His presence. When my kids are misbehaving, they don't have to clean up their act before they come into my presence. Are you hearing me? They don't have to clean up their act before they come into their presence and talk to me. You know, if my kid's having a fit, running around, acting like crazy, I'm telling them, Cameron, knock it off. Ooh, now, we're going to the now we're getting specific. <laughs> and he's running around, and he falls and scrapes his knee, and he's coming to me to take care of his boo-boo. I'm not going to be like, listen, bud, you were just having a temper tantrum. You know, let's fix that first, and then we'll take care of the knee. You know what I'm saying? That's ridiculous, right? I'm going to get down there. I'm going to clean up his knee. I'm going to love him. All right. I'm going to show him grace. Right. Yeah. Amen? And so that's the grace that our God, our Heavenly Father, gives to us. He adopted us into his family as his children because he wanted to. He chose you to be in his family not because of anything you could offer him, but because he wanted you. He wanted you to be in his family. He gave you life and life abundantly because he wanted to. He offers freedom because it makes him happy. He does these things because it brings him joy. And he's a good father. And so, so often we, we, we get, get impotent in prayer and we can't go to God and, and intercede for someone. And again, um, if, if, you're, if you just joined us, get on your phone. We're going to have a corporate prayer for Pastor Jeff. Text your friends. Tell them to get online right now and join us um, on our, on our um, YouTube or on our website, swfhome.org. And so, so listen, so when we go to God, sometimes he can't, we feel, we, we're not going to him. We're not connecting with the Holy Spirit because we're holding on to our baggage. And we think that because I've screwed up in this area, I can't connect with God. God, you don't, I did something terrible last night, and so now I can't come into your presence and worship you and seek your face. God, I'm struggling in this area in my life, and so I can't come to you and connect with you and worship you and seek your face. Are you hearing me? You know, so grace is this, that God you know, forgives us. He wants it. He adopts us in a, into his family and, and we can freely come to him. The Lord's Prayer, the first thing, um, excuse me, the, one of the last things is asking for forgiveness. Right. Even asking for what we need. You know, the very first thing is our Father in heaven. You are holy. You are gracious. Hallowed be your name. You understand? The very first thing is we come to God and get in his presence not because of anything that's going on, well, good we've done, and we don't stay away because of anything bad we've done. We come into his presence because he made it so, because he wants us there. So we, got, we put your guilt aside. Right. You know what I mean? You know, table that for later. All right? What you've done, you know, that boo-boo that's on your knee, okay, you know, he wants to fix that. You know, he'll deal with the other thing after. All right? So we need to come to his presence. We need to realize that we come to him by grace alone. We can come to him freely, expecting him to hear us. He wants us to be there. And so how do we do that? You know, how do we connect with Jesus? I was having this conversation with, with my daughter. We have it periodically. Because I'm like, we're talking about worship. And she's learning how to be a, a worship leader. And she did a great job. You did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> So she's learning how to be a worship leader. And I'm talking about the most important thing is to connect with the Holy Spirit. 
You know, how do you do that? So often, you know, people, they struggle. They're like, they're, they're, they're praying really hard. They're all up in their head, you know. You know, it's like, listen, no, you just, you just gotta, you gotta settle down. You know, you know, just chill out a second. Calm down. Just open up your mind and your heart to the Holy Spirit. You know, right now, I can feel the presence of God on me yeah. right this second. Yeah. Because I'm just, you've got to slow down, you know, and just put everything else aside. Let there be nothing else but you and God. Yeah. It's like when your child comes to you, you just give them that hug. There's nothing else in that moment, in that, that kid's mind, other than that hug that you're giving them. All right? And so you just, you just release it for a second and you connect with him. All right, so, so, so we have to get out of our head. Stop praying, you know, saying so many words. That's what Jesus said. Thinking you're going to be here because of all these things you're saying. You know, just slow down a second. Connect. Get in his presence because he wants you there. Come on. He is longing for you to come there. Yeah. All right, he's hoping that you'll just not get in your head so much and be so worried about what you did but come in his presence. Like that father that was waiting for the prodigal son to come home. And the prodigal son had this big speech of, of how he was going to, you know, say how sorry he was to his father. His father didn't even give him a chance to say the speech. Didn't even care. That's right. He ran down that road when his son started approaching. Yeah. And that son didn't even come there with the, the right intentions. You know, he came there like, I've totally given up. I'm going to be a servant. Not even coming expecting his father to forgive him. You know, and that father ran to him and embraced him yeah. and celebrated him being there. Come when you come into God's presence, he celebrates you being there. He wants you there. And so it's so important. So we realize we're who we're talking to. We're talking to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the master creator of the entire universe. Yeah. You're the one who loves us unconditionally. And paid the ultimate price for us to be adopted into his family. And it doesn't matter about your past, your history, your baggage, whatever you have going on in your life, table it. Leave it there. Come to Jesus. And so then he goes on and he says, you know, pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, earth begins right here. You know? So change that word. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in my life as it is in heaven, in my family's life as it is in heaven, in Pastor Jeff's life Amen. as it is in heaven, yes. as Ms. Dawn's father yes. as it is in heaven. Yes. Amen? Yes. And so his kingdom, you know, that's his, 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 his presence here on earth. You know, your will, what God has, has ordained up in the heavenlies, what he has set in motion up there. We want that to become manifested, to become a reality here on earth, to begin to see it. Speak, we talk about name and claim it. And all that is, is is speaking life into what God has already said, yeah. what God has already done. Yeah. He has already provided healing. Yeah. He's already provided salvation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and peace that passes all understanding. So speak that into existence. Speak joy into your life. You know, choose joy. Speak that joy into your life. Even in sadness or grief, speak joy into your life. Stand on that rock, on that grace, knowing that God is there holding you and you're walking with him. And so that's the second thing. You know, is we want his will to be done in our life. We want to be, and he invites us to be a part of that process. And that's where intercession comes in. You know, standing in the gap for someone else. You know, be a part of it. But again, you know, we say, well, I'm a, you know, who's, who's a super prayer warrior and who isn't and all these different things. Listen, the person that is the most childlike is the most effective. The one who has that, that, that trust that the Father is going to take care of business. You hear me? You know, understanding that it's not about anything good or bad that I've done, any experience that I have or don't have. It's all about God's grace and His love and mercy alone. You know, then He moves on, give us today our daily bread. 
You know, and that, that speaks of two different things. One is provision, and the daily bread speaks of manna being, coming down from heaven uh, when the children of Israel were, were in the desert. And the way manna worked is that we have this mindset that it was um, wonder bread falling from the sky and being all over the place, and they just picked it up and ate it. But the Bible says that manna was actually like coriander seed, and it's very hard. If you were to take a coriander seed, eat it just as it was, it would come in and come out exactly the same. And it would offer no nutritional value to your body. So in order for the manna to have value, to be able to feed the people, they had to take it. They had to grind it. They had to add water and make it into a cake and cook it. There was work that had to be done in order for that manna to add value for them to eat, okay? And so this manna and this daily bread also speaks to the second thing is wisdom, the word of God, all right? And so sometimes if we hear the word of God or we're hearing this message about faith and grace and it comes in, if we don't apply it to our lives, which we talked about Wednesday, you know, in the book of James, a faith without works is dead. If we don't apply it to our lives, it immediately comes in and goes out and adds no value in our lives. We get excited and like, oh, thank you, Jesus, for about a half an hour. But by dinner time, you're going to forget everything I just said. All right. Uh, so, so this manna, they had to, they had to work it. They had to, to, to grind it. They had to, to water it before they could, before they can consume it. And when they did that, it provided nutritional value. And so, when it comes to hearing the word of God, we have to, like James said, there has to be works. We have to apply it to our life. And in this case, we're going to pray. All right. So again, text your friends, get them online. We're going to pray together corporately all around the country. And so when we pray, we're going we're gonna to do this, okay? We're going to put our issues aside, all right? We're going to put the great things that are all about us and the things that are so terrible that we hide, we're going to push those aside. We're going to hold on to Father God's arms, all right? And we're going to walk in grace and by the Spirit, and we're going to trust Him to take care of business. But the Word of God has to to be applied. And so in prayer, what we're doing is we're inviting the Holy Spirit to come and to give us wisdom. All right? And uh, put that verse up in, in uh, James for me in the message here really quick. I'm going to read off this paper. It said, okay, so James says, it says, if in uh, chapter 1, verse 5, I'm reading from the message. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. You'll get his help and won't be condescended to when you ask for it. Ask boldly, believing, without a second thought. People who worry their prayers are like wind whipped waves. Don't think you're going to get anything from the master that way, adrift at sea, keeping all your options open. Now, what that means, the wind whipped waves, keeping all your options open, he says, pray specifically. But too often we, 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 we start that way and then we get fearful. You know what I'm saying? And our prayers become broader. And we start, and it usually ends with, well, God, whatever your will is, let it be done. Come on, has anybody ever prayed that way? Yeah. You're going specific, then you get scared because you don't want to be like, you know, God not to hear you, you know, and feel rejected and, you know, feel weird. So your prayer gets broader and you say, whatever your will is, God, let it happen. And so he says, don't do that. Don't think that your prayer is going to be answered when you talk to God that way. It's like your kid coming to you for Christmas, asking you specifically for one thing, and then all of a sudden they give this big long you know, list, and they're like, whatever you want, you know. You know? Be, you know, be specific to the Lord. And when you lack wisdom, which we just talked about here, with, here in the Word of God, ask Him. He loves to help. Yeah. He wants to show you what He means. And so then He goes on, you know, forgive us of our trespasses as we've forgiven those who trespass against us, or forgive us of our debts as we've forgiven our debtors. <laughs> 
And that's the point we can ask God to forgive us, to help us through our weaknesses. And, to, and just like we had talked about before, about celebrating those weaknesses and saying, you know, like Paul did, and say, you know, weakness, thank you. You just reminded me that I need to get on my knees and talk to Jesus. All you are is a, is a memorial over there reminding me that, that God's grace is enough for me, that I need to, that I'm not going to give you any more attention. I'm going to spend, I'm going to focus on Jesus. And it's implied there that because, we for, because Jesus forgives us, we also forgive other people. And we won't, and he says that, uh, as you, he says, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Now, that doesn't mean for salvation because God's forgiveness always comes first. But we won't walk in that blessing, that freedom of, you know what I'm saying? Bitterness means like a cancer, you know what I'm saying? It holds, it, it holds on to you. you know, you'll be walking in spiritual death. And, and if you've ever held a grudge against somebody, you know what I'm talking about. And so just as Jesus forgave us of a debt we can never pay, we need to be gracious and forgive others of the debts they never pay. They, 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 they can't pay us. And so, and then the last, you know, and then the last thing he says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, God does not tempt, all right? The enemy tempts, okay? But temptation, again, the only power that temptation has in our life is, is by, by attacking the evil one within us, okay? That's our own sinful, selfish nature, which we talked about in Galatians. All right, it's our own sinful, selfish nature. It's not talking about the devil here. It's our own sinful, selfish nature. And so it, where it says we'll, we're, we're dr our, our desire drags us away and it, gives, and it conceives, it becomes sin and gives birth to death, okay? And so, um, but the way that, so how we fix that, how temptation has no power over us is we've got to get control of that evil one, you know, within us. And that only comes from, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So walking in God's spirit and, and walking in his grace. And so again, pull out your phones, text all your friends, message them on Facebook, whatever you got to do, post it if you want. Tell everybody to get online right now. We're going to be, um, and Caitlin, come on up here. We're going to be entering into prayer. And we are going to be lifting up Pastor Jeff, we are going to be believing for healing. And then we're also going to be praying for um, Ms. Dawn's father. And, and we're going to lift other needs as well. And we're also going to speak, um, we're going to pray for God's protection upon our church. All right. And we're going to come against any attacks of the enemy. And we're, God has an amazing plan for 2019 yes. for spirit and word fellowship. And so we are going to do that. Oh, and last thing I want to say is that we are also, all of us, listen up, we're going to come under the authority of Pastor Bob Vineyard. Amen. All right? And so he, if we, you know, if, if things are happening, you know, he, right, Jesus is our main covering. But as far as church and families, you know, the parents are the covering over the kids. But as church goes, Pastor Bob is the covering over all of us. You know, and everyone in leadership has authority in this church because of the authority Pastor Bob gives us. And Pastor Bob has authority because of the authority that Jesus gives him. And so we want to pray for uh, um, his health. We want to pray for wisdom. We want to pray for a financial breakthrough in his life. All right, because all of it is a trickle-down effect. As he is blessed and highly favored and protected, that we're, if we're under that umbrella... It hits us, yeah. all right? And, and we also want to pray against any spiritual attacks on him because as he is protected, as he is blessed, or as he is safe, it shields all of us as well. Just as the parents shield the children, all right, the senior pastor of our church protects, seals the congregation. Amen? And so we want to, I want to invite you to continue to pray more diligently for our, our lead senior pastor. Pray more diligently for him every single day. You know, again, for his health, for, God, for wisdom, for God to direct him, all right, and for financial blessing. All right, so Caitlin, are you ready? All right, let's, uh, let's you, what we're gonna do is, 
I'm going to stay up here just because we got the TV on. And I'm going to pray out loud a little bit. Um, and, but if, can you, let me grab that mic over there, yes. So if you, if you want to lead in, lead in a prayer, great. But you got to use the mic, okay? And you got to come stand on the platform so you're not in the dark. So we'll get here. So what we're going to do is while, while Caitlin's playing, we are going to find a place in this church. You can be at the altar. You can walk around, all right, wherever you want to be. But we're going to take this next uh, moment and we are going to connect with Jesus. And Caitlin, you feel free to sing or do whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do. But remember, this is not, we're not talking really hard in the sense of we are connecting with the Holy Spirit, okay? We come to him because he wants us in his presence. Come to him freely. And turn the lights up right here, over my head. Come to him freely. Because his grace is sufficient for you. Father, we come to you right now. We invite you, Holy Spirit, in this place. And we thank you for our salvation. We thank you for dying on the cross, paying the price for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank that you adopted us into our family, into your family, because it made you happy, because it made you joyful. And Lord, I pray that we would just come to you, Lord, not because of anything we've done or anything, or stay away because of anything we, we have in our life, but know that you want us in your presence. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak life, we speak healing over Pastor Jeff right now. We are believing for a divine miracle in his life, over his heart. We speak to that valve and we speak to that heart and we command it in the name of Jesus to come under the authority of God and the authority of Jesus and to be whole and to work right and that you would receive all glory. You would receive all glory from this miracle. That lives would be touched. People would be saved because of the work that you do inside of him. And we thank you for that healing. We thank you for that healing. And we are believing for that right now online. In this building, all, o- all over the place. We are believing, expecting that healing to take place. And we pray that that peace that passes all understanding would be upon him right now in the name of Jesus and upon hope. Lord, I pray for Ms. Dawn's father. And Lord, I pray you would be at that family as he is in hospice. Lord, we pray you would give the doctors and nurses wisdom that you would be with the family. And Lord, I don't know, I should have asked Ms. Dawn, I don't know where he he is spiritually, Lord. Okay, he's saved. Thank you, Ms. Dawn. And so we thank you for his salvation. And we thank you that, that uh, when the time comes, he's going to be home with you. But Lord, but not until you're done with him. Lord, may he be a witness to the people around him, to his family members to those in the hospice and to the doctors and the nurses. And we pray for, for it physically, Lord, for, on his life. And we pray for the family. We pray for the family right now for that peace, that comfort that passes all understanding. So Lord, do a work, do a miracle in that building. Even now, begin to touch him, touch his body, Touch his heart, touch his mind. Fill his room with the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for our church. We pray that you would just put uh, angels, guardian angels all around, all around our building, Lord. And Lord, what the enemy would mean for evil, Lord, that you would change it and transform it and use it for good. And I pray for your protection. You are our Father, and we are going to trust in you. I speak health. I speak life. I speak financial freedom upon the pastoral staff, 
upon the leaders, upon the congregation. And I pray you would raise up spirit and word fellowship to be a lighthouse, to be a powerhouse in this community to see multitudes saved, to reach out to the, to the, to the down and outers, to the brokenhearted, that we would, just as James said, we would go out to, to minister to the orphans and the widows, those that can't give us anything in return but we would show them the love of Jesus. We would show them your grace. Raise up a people in here that has such a passion for you and they would walk in your grace and they and walk by your spirit. And because of that, we'll walk in your love. And we'd see people healed, saved, set free in the name of Jesus. We pray for Pastor Bob right now. Lord, we speak healing and perfect health over his life. That you would touch him physically, touch his mind. Lord, give him wisdom to bring your word in such a powerful way like never before. That the remaining years of his life would supersede everything in the past. And Lord, over the, over the next decades, Lord, that you would use him in such a powerful way to reach nations. And we speak financial blessing on his life and protection on his life. And Lord, that covering would be over this congregation, all those that submit under his spiritual authority. And I pray for unity within this body. And we pray for laborers. The harvest is ready, it's ripe. There's people that need to be saved. They need your hands and feet to touch them through the people. Father, we love you. And also, Father, while we're praying, Lord, we lift up our nation. We pray for our leaders. We pray for President Trump. We pray for the leaders in Congress. We pray for the leaders in the Supreme Court. And we pray that you would just move divinely by your Holy Spirit upon their lives. That you would use this moment in history as a turning point to draw this nation closer to you. To truly be one nation under God. And Lord, I believe you blessed this nation over the years because we have been a nation that sent missionaries all around this world preaching your gospel. And I pray you would restore us to that place in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Just continue. Go ahead. I speak to any I speak to the spirit of confusion, Lord, as you've given us a wonderful message, Lord, that, to, uh, that shows us that we can just reach our hand up to you as a, as a wonderful, loving father. I, I rebuke the spirit of confusion over our lost sons and daughters. Yes. Over our lost loved ones. That, that we rebuke that spirit of confusion, that they understand clearly the plan of that what you created for them was love. You are love. It's not what you do, it's who you are. So Lord, I speak a special download. Those who are watching by way of internet, those who are in this house, if you have sons and daughters, Lord, we are, we are speaking that love right now over them. We just pour out your spirit over them. Let them not even, if there's any confusion, it's because they don't understand the peace that has fallen over them, Lord. Let that be the only confusion, but Lord, they will come to the knowledge that it's you. It is you. So devil, we, we just rebuke you in Jesus' name, that spirit that would try to um, just confuse their mind in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Father, we're here this morning because we love you. This is the day you have prepared for us. This is the time that we can unite together knowing that Jesus is here in the midst of us. From the innermost parts of our being, we call out to you because we love you. 
and you have given us a foundation then and that is your word your word is true it has always been true it is true it will always be true on that rock on that foundation your word we stand Father, even as we pray for Jeff in the hospital, this is not a bad day because every day you, get, you have given us is a day you prepared for us. It is good. It is perfect. But God, it's a difficult day. And with difficult days, are, they are days of preparation. So this day in Jeff life, Jeff's life, Pastor Jeff, you are preparing him. Your word, your word is that rock. That word says that you paid for his sins. You paid for his life and you paid for his healing. So we stand on that rock believing that the healing will manifest. But God, I see it as a day of preparation. Father, I see this church that you are preparing. God, your word is going forth. Father, you are speaking with us. Hablando con nosotros. God, you are touching us. Tocando nosotros porque quiere cambiar. You want to change us. To be used for your glory. We wait on you. We hope in you. We wait because we have hope. And in that, we hope that you, will, you are working your life in us, that we will be used in your kingdom for your glory. Father, this is the beginning. The time is short, so it's the beginning of this time. We will run with your word. We'll run with the truth. We'll run with the life, and we will see salvation here on the earth. Father, we will see lives touched. We will see lives changed. Father, we gather here as a small group, but yet then you have the other ones watching who are part of the group. And Father, we will watch it spread. Your word is, your word is to go to the uttermost, uttermost parts of the earth, uttermost parts of the world. We thank you because your presence is here with us. Your glory is only the evidence that the presence that remains Father, I thank you where you are with us. I thank you for the word you are speaking. And there are words of life. There are words of hope. They are truth. And on this truth we stand. On that firm foundation, let the storms come. Because we, we have the rock that we will not be shaken. We will remain forever. Because of that rock, the God of our salvation, Jesus Christ. He is the word. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And Father, I give you the praise and the glory. And again, te amo con todo mi corazón. I love you with my whole heart. I am in love you with you. To you be glory. so amazed by your your grace we're so amazed by your love for us your long suffering we're so thankful for our salvation we're so thankful for your blood that was shed upon the cross and the stripes that you took on your back for our healing so father we thank you for these miracles that are going to take place we look forward to the good reports that we're going to hear from Pastor Jeff. We look forward for the good report that we're going to hear from the doctors that this is going to be such an amazing event. And we just thank you for it. And we're looking forward to the, the great report from all of those who have been lifting up prayers in this place for the needs in their lives, the things going on, the lost ones in their homes being saved their children coming to you for those that are that are struggling depression being healed 
people being healed from physical needs and mental illness. We thank you for that. And we thank you for the amazing thing that you're going to do in Spirit and Word Fellowship in 2019. We are humbled to be a part of your kingdom and to be a part of your great work. Lord, may you receive all the glory all the time in our lives. And we don't want to move forward as a church unless you're leading the way. Unless your presence is manifest here in this place. And when we go out onto the streets and our homes and our marketplace and our workplace, I pray that you would just reveal to us by your spirit what it is to have that child like faith and we would just grab a hold of Abba Father and allow you to lead us by your spirit and that we would be your mouthpiece of love compassion and freedom to a hurting and broken world and we're believing for many souls to be saved and set free in the name of Jesus I pray you keep everyone safe on the roads today as we leave this place. We pray for traveling mercies for, for Pastor Bob and the remaining team members. They're going to be flying from New Jersey here to Dulles today. And we just thank you for the amazing testimony that we're going to hear of all the great things that you're doing. And we give you glory. And we're so excited to be in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We praise you, Jesus. Amen.